Hey, how's it going? My name is Felix and welcome to Tiny Glade. Today, we are going to be building a port city. All right, originally, I started off this build by wanting to build a really big boat, specifically a galleon of some sort. Now, there's not exactly the most intricate shapes to try and build it. I mean, I have some squares and circles, but I think I was actually able to mimic or at least get a resemblance to a boat shape, mostly using squares and walls and probably a lot of imagination. Now, I want to point out a funny thought in my head and a little bit of backstory of how this thought came about. I had a boat, then wondered what else could I build with it? Thought about making another boat, maybe like some sort of battle, but then I was really left with just a lot of empty space. So then came the idea, all right, let's go ahead and make a dock, which eventually turned into the port town idea. It is just somewhat funny to me that I didn't build a boat for my dock. I built a whole dock just for this boat. And the things to notice that I wanted to ensure in order to make this boat seem like a galleon, first and foremost, there are three masts, which unfortunately couldn't really figure out how to get sails on them. Even tried using banners, but that didn't really work out. And then on the back of the boat, you will notice uh, which is very fortunate for me with the usage of all my squares is a very square like stern raised up and I think by focusing on those characteristics I was really able to create a believable galleon and then lastly to try and at least get it more boat shaped I used some walls and created an archway in order to mimic a pointed bow and with a couple more details like some cannon holes and trying to add some wood to it I I don't know. I think it's just really cool. I managed to get some sort of believable boat out of this. Unless I'm just crazy and uh, everyone else is like, that's, that's not a boat at all. I think it's a boat and I, I'm really proud of it and I think it's cool. And with the boat done, it was time to move on to building the home it would reside in. I started off by laying down some foundations as I knew I wanted the port to be a part of a developed city and wanted the entire port area to have some stone flooring underneath which did cause some problems that I'll talk about later on. The dock layout though, as is pretty common with these kind of docks, I built a lower level that is closer to the water level. Then I wanted to include more custom height levels to my base, though it is a bit tedious, but I really wanted to try and build more staircases, which you can essentially do by stacking multiple square pieces together. I think you could also use walls, but I favor the square pieces as generally for me, it is a lot easier for the things I tend to build. I think this has been one of the longer builds I've done so far and typically a unique challenge of always building things like cities as opposed to I guess a massive castle or structure is generally the fact I have to build a variety of buildings and I really wanted them to be unique and only used more cookie cutter types later on depending on the area which you'll see later but most of these buildings along the dock here I wanted to have a central street and have the buildings go all around it. Now, most of these buildings I wanted to imagine along the dock are probably things like stores and restaurants. Maybe some of them could be residents. I don't know, it's, it's a medieval city, may not have the greatest urban planning and zone management. So you'll see me really trying to experiment with all sorts of layouts. 
And some of the buildings I feel are more intricate, but sometimes they can be super simple depending on the style. And I think that's okay, right? That sometimes you have super intricate and unique buildings that have all sorts of designs in them. And then sometimes you build a square with some windows and it's a shack because it just makes sense for the area. And getting into one of those building challenges I mentioned earlier, because I have used so many foundations, and especially now that it is a heightened level, it has become very difficult to use walls, and pretty much I can't use fences at all. So if I ever want to make arches or use walls, I have to dig through all the foundations to try and find the wall, raise it up high enough so I can see it. It's, yeah, definitely getting lost in my underground maze of foundations and trying to dig out where the heck this wall is. So I try my best to use arches where I can, but it just became really tedious and sometimes I just straight up gave up trying to find a wall. I had to be a bit more picky in where I got to put arches in the city. Probably should have planned more ahead on that, but yeah, we, uh, we don't do that here. <laughs> but another cool technique I ended up doing along the docks here is by using fences and then turning them into fence arches using pathways, you can pretty much create planks. And I did that in order to make a more rickety wooden plank that goes around the dock. Now, a weird thing about fence arches, for some reason, whenever they are made into arches, you can't recolor them unless you stick out a fence piece that isn't an arch and is still a fence and it's like connected to the arch still. You can then click on the fence which will then let you recolor the whole archway and it it's weird it somewhat made it a little more annoying trying to get all the arches recolored but once i managed to figure out how to recolor the planks i definitely wanted a color that made them look like they were wet and it just added another dimension of making this look like a medieval dock just in my opinion it looks so good I then proceeded to recolor a lot of the stone foundations to a much more darker stone color, just less bright on the eyes I think, though sometimes I will use a lighter color like on my stairs just to have some contrast. I started to work on more of the detailing of the dock and once again began to put more arches along the wall and I think once I had finished that it really nailed down the dock look. And here is an interesting part of making these as well. You know the good old saying, happy accidents? Well, I made the arches in the water as well, and when you put the pathways in the water, they make stones, lily pads, essentially water vegetation, which I did not actually know until I put the paths in the water. And I think once you start seeing that along the arches and my dock, one of those things where I had no idea that when you put paths in water, that happens. But once I did, just added another level of detail to the dock. So just one of those things of, I did not mean to do that, but it worked out and I like it. So we kept it. I'm going to be really working on a lot of the buildings now. And kind of, as you can see on the dock, there's a big warehouse and another just shack I thought would be a good storage building. But as I continue back onto more of the buildings in the main city, it's just going to be a lot of just figuring out different layouts and making unique builds here. This is going to be one of the first large buildings within the city and something I had a more specific purpose in mind. This is going to be a tavern and 
definitely one of the more notable points of interest in the city. Now, I do like to imagine it's one of those places you may frequent in like a D&D adventure or something and always returning here after a big quest and getting rest. And probably one of those where you gotta go and remove all the rats in the cellar for some reason. The tavern itself on the front facade is pretty symmetrical and wanted to try and make sure there is space for a lot of rooms and places for people to stay, but also needed to ensure that the tavern itself should be large enough to accommodate space for a large dining room and a kitchen somewhere, which I inevitably ended up placing towards the back. But something I want to mention as well as I'm building this tavern, where I realized how much space the tavern took up, you will notice I'm getting real close to the border and there wasn't really a way to seamlessly make the border, I guess, look complete. So I do have to use a bit of more imagination here where I think the city would just continue off in those directions, but obviously can't really do much about that. I just imagine that we are like in a game cell and the rest of the city isn't rendered in or something. But if I could continue it through the border, more of the city would more than likely be that way. So this is what I was talking about earlier. I would definitely like if the areas near the border continued more fluidly, but I more or less just have it shoved against the wall. And at this point, I'm just going to pretend that it does carry on to the rest of the city as I imagine it would. And like an isometric game or something, the rest of it you just can't see because it's part of a different cell in the game. But I did end up making this walkway going up behind this area, which I think does help to make the rest of the city that you can see at least feel more complete. And also just another area for me to add some height variation. And yeah, I, I really like the staircases here. Now to fill up the rest of the space, I thought it would be really cool to have some sort of market, especially as it wraps around the corner of the tavern and then starts to make this alleyway. And this is where I did start to make some more residences and what I consider cookie cutter kind of buildings where they are just very simple but it gave me the exact look I wanted where we have now residences that aren't as high class or luxurious, where definitely the wealth starts to go down a lot more. And then it just makes this alleyway feel a lot more cluttered and very claustrophobic. So I'm making use of these Tudor Rose style homes as it really helps to sell the kind of population density the city would have. And it also just fits into the concept of the European medieval style of this build. Now, I definitely love making these areas in the city and it's almost like the less desirable areas to imagine and don't look that great on a tourist brochure, but I think it is always just so important to the livelihood of the city and the actual grittiness that a city like this would have. They also always just make really great places to walk through in the game, especially in the first person camera. So, you know, that's an added plus. Now, a thing about my row houses, I wanted them to generally be similar, but it is always a good idea to try and give builds some variation so it's not overtly just the same thing over and over again, even if I consider them somewhat cookie cutter. But I do try and at least give some of these differences uh, between the houses, mainly in color and sometimes in height, just to add some contrast between each other. 
And then I also snuck a store back here, like one of those trinket shops that sells weird things mostly, but somehow stays in business despite never seeing anyone in there. Probably where you end up getting some really interesting item for your D&D party. You know, I think I've mentioned that twice now, but I seriously always think how cool would it be to make D&D stuff from Tiny Glade, and it probably is a really good way to actually get some visuals on places for a campaign. Like, imagine actually sitting down, pulling up various Tiny Glade builds, and being like, here's a 3D map for you guys to walk through. You can actually see the market and walk through the alleyway, get to the tavern. Oh man, that would be so freaking cool. So, continuing with that, as your party walks through the rest of the alleyway, you will notice two more buildings to finish this area. One being probably another shop or something, but then a much larger one, and I wanted this one to be a blacksmith. All right, you may have noticed I have pretty much left this last huge area up here blank and what I intended to do with it. My thought for this part was to build some sort of like headquarters or barracks for what I can imagine to be the city guard. With that, I wanted some sort of castle-like walls as this would be a large defensible place. And honestly, it just looks really cool for the port. So I placed some turrets more or less on the corners and then just connecting them up with walls to build the perimeter of the barracks. And then once I got to the barracks itself, I wanted to make a large space for soldiers to be housed and live in as they keep watch over the port and at least the lower part of the city. I needed to make this building large enough so it would look almost like a massive dorm for the soldiers, but needed to also make sense. There's probably some dining rooms, armory stuff, and a lot of other things going on in there. Then tried to leave a small amount of space around the building outside as to provide some space for training. And once again, 
Uh, if you notice, I am running up pretty close to the back border again, and I've kept the border open as I'd like to imagine if I had more space, the barracks would continue that way and there would be more things and probably an actual more in-depth training ground. So it is a reason why I more or less keep the borders open and not covered, so it may seem like there is more beyond it. Added a gate tower near the entrance and then some sort of out tower outside of it that was really there because it helps make my curved staircase look right, but probably just another huge tower for the guard to overlook the city. This barracks build did give me a little trouble, mainly because I was starting to become very strapped for space and still had to make it look big enough to house all the things I talked about before and also have enough space to just make the building look interesting. So. As you can see, I'm definitely trying to squeeze in as much as I can into these tiny nooks and really fill in the space. And once again, making use of different stylings to add some depth to it. Really love the wood timber style a lot, but coming to the other entrance of the barracks, I thought it would be really interesting to try and add just another heightened platform. This one kind of overlooks the market and it's like an area for someone to probably be guarding or watching, I guess. Even though it may be kind of tedious, I really do enjoy making these staircases, though so I do wonder if one day they'll just make a more dedicated tool for these because I feel staircases throughout a build, especially when you don't have access to the pathways, is pretty common. So who knows, but that would just be nice to have an actual dedicated staircase tool. But for now, we'll make do with our own and this staircase goes up to another watchtower of some sort. Coming over to honestly this super crunched up right side of the build that I haven't done much with yet, I had a small platform here and thought it'd be cool to have some sort of tunnel entrance. Probably could be like an exit for the sewers, maybe a thieves guild is hanging out down there and that's how you get there. So I used some walls to build the outside of it but then I covered it with a square piece as for the roof so it looks like it goes somewhere. And then on the right side of the bridge, just trying to fit in a couple more row houses to make it look like the city continues this way. And I just wanted a narrow path that goes along the edge, which is probably actually very dangerous in my head, but it looks really cool. And even left a gap in between the houses, so it may seem like a street continues on this way. But as I'm finishing up the rest of the detailing on these royal houses, we are going to finish up with the speed build and we'll be jumping back into live. So to get a closer look at the rest of the port. Also, I figured out a different way to do the mass on the ship where instead I can use the columns that come from having a build piece in the air and it just looks so much better as vertical beams. And then I was able to put banners in between. It looks so much better. And here we are coming back into the port and as you can see I'm this galleon I'm just very happy with very proud of I think it just looks so cool and the fact that I finally figured out that using columns as the vertical beams for the mass is just so much better makes it actually look like more legit and then I've got the banners actually going in between the mass oh it just looks it looks like a legit ship it really does and then it's coming into port there's a I try to make a small, I guess, a dinghy. So that exists. And just try to add some more pieces into the water uh, to make the port feel a bit more alive. But as you can see, this is the rest of the build. And also, this is a really cool technique I've seen uh, from a video, I think. And it's where you can, if you want decorations essentially just thrown about, you can put a foundation with trap doors in order to try and spawn some decorations. You do have to kind of get lucky, I think or it's really weird trying to get the decorations correct. Sometimes I don't actually understand how they spawn because they are weird, but once you do get some in, you can then hide it with the actual top flooring that you want so that you can't see the trap doors anymore and you have the decorations. So that's just a cool way to try and make the area feel a lot more cluttered for all the rest of the buildings. And I can imagine that we could name or use your imagination for whatever buildings you think these are. It could probably be shops, restaurants, maybe a residence, 
I'm kind of thinking this is probably like a guild of some sort. And then the actual uh, city guard itself. And I really love all the decorations now thrown about. I, I love the fact that you can change the colors of the banners. Fortunately, one thing that is somewhat annoying when you have to do it is you do have to go one by one when recoloring all the banners, which is very unfortunate. And then here, yeah, once again, just talking about how I'm crunched up against the wall and can't really do much about the border from here. So if I could connect another piece, that'd be super cool. This is where I would imagine, you know, you would continue walking along this path here and there'd be more going on to the right. But then I think I'll also take, let's try and visit, uh, where is it? The first person camera. And starting on the dock, I mean, look at that. Oh my gosh, look at that. So cool. We're on the dock right now. You can hop on the staircase. This is always the most awkward thing though. Whenever I build all these platforms and I'm in a first person, let's just not talk about how uneven it is. So you will see my character like bouncing around a lot. But just going through our main street here, checking around for all the buildings. Then let's take a walk through the market and then the alleyway that I always talk about is always such a cool thing to walk through in the first person cam because it's so enclosed and tight but it just feels so cool and another staircase uh this is kind of awkward where yeah i can't do anything about the tree that's not technically in the build so i do want to imagine that that's not there <laughs> so uh or you just have to walk through a tree some we need to get some landscaping people there's there's some issues going on let's take a look around all the houses, residences, and then a blacksmith here. Did end up making a workshop area just outside of it. And then we walk back to Central Street. And that is, that is really cool. I love that so much. We can go out and let's take actually a look. I'm actually going to go into free cam here. Uh, and then take a look at it at nighttime. I actually don't see it that often at night as it is pretty hard to see when you're building. I only really do it whenever I'm putting down lanterns, but I think it's always just going to be my favorite part of the game. Once you finish a build and then you got to kind of see it complete and then you just go through the time cycle. See how it all lights up. So peaceful, so good looking. And then the last thing I'll see, which is I think is just very funny because it yeah, it doesn't work at all for this kind of build, but it always looks so cool because I love the winter theme so much. But yeah, with the winter theme, the entire ocean I have uh, turns into ice. So now my boat is stuck. Um, yeah, that, that's a problem. I guess it technically could make sense. It, it happens, I guess, as long as it's like tied to the dock. I mean, I guess it's not going anywhere, um, but Seeing the rest of the snow just in the town, on the ground, everywhere. Look how cool this is. Such a pretty game. So it is absolutely something I really wanted to have a big emphasis on and focus on for this build is just these small differences in heights and some variations in that. So definitely a lot of staircases and it's just like small corners, nooks and crannies that are just interesting to walk up and are just part of the city, kind of like here in this watchtower. Kind of have like a guard post for anyone trying to enter the barracks and then like an actual watchtower. I think it all just comes alive and looks so cool. Just like the small parts of the, of the city. Very happy with this build and I love this port. And I hope you've enjoyed the build as well. And if you love this port, I hope you consider dropping it a like. And hope you consider subscribing to see if I end up building anything else um, and see what, what comes next. But I've had a lot of fun with this port build and my cool boat galleon. If you want to check out the rest of the tiny glade builds I've done so far, made a castle as one of my first ever, and then I made a university after that, the cards will be on the screen. You can check those out. But this is going to be the end of this video. So my name is Felix, and I hope to catch you again next time. Bye.